بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم My dear student, I am Dr. Muhammad Yasin from Faisal Abad campus. Today our topic is acidity of carboxylic acid. Uh, this topic belongs to the fundamental of organic chemistry semester 2. What we will discuss today that why carboxylic acids are acid. What is their acidity and what factors affect their acidity. So these are the key points that we are going to discuss in this lecture. On this slide I have listed the key concepts that we will discuss today. First of all we will discuss what are the carboxylic acids, why carboxylic acids are acidic, effect of resonance on the acidity of carboxylic acids. We will also discuss the effect of electronegative substituent and the electropositive substituent on the acidity of the carboxylic acid. So these are the key concepts that we will cover in this lecture. The carboxylic acid is an organic compound that contains a carboxyl functional group across to an alkyl group. The general formula of carboxylic acid can be written as RCOOS. Here the R refers to the alkyl group. The carboxylic acids occur widely in nature. For example, the most important are the are commonly found the natural carboxylic acid is the acetic acid that is the active ingredient of the uh, vinegar. All the citrus fruits contain the citric acid. All the amino acids contain the uh, carboxylic acid functional group. Other important examples include the amino acids and fatty acids. The propagation of the carboxylic acids gives a carboxylic anion. Carboxylic acids can easily be synthesized through the oxidation of aldehydes. Their derivatives include ester, acid chloride, acid anhydride, and amides. As far as the naming of the carboxylic acids is concerned, Carboxylic acids are named by replacing the E of the corresponding alkane named with the OH acid. For example, here on this slide, you may see the propanoic acid. Its name is derived from the propane, as the propanoic acid contain the four, um, uh, sorry, three uh, carbon atoms, and the uh, we know that the three carbon atoms. Uh, uh, alkene is called the propane, so from the propane name we are dropping the E and is replacing it with the oic acid. So the name becomes the propanoic acid. And if there is any substituent, the, you have to name that substituent um, with the, you have to show the, that substituent with the number of the carbon atom. Uh, remember that the carboxylic, uh, carboxylic uh, functional group is always given the number one. So here, uh, in another example, you are seeing the uh, the structure of the four methyl pentanoic acid. And here I have uh, used the color scheme. You may see that the methyl is shown in the green color, and it is uh, substituted at the carbon number four. And similarly, the uh, carboxy carboxylic functional group is present on the carbon number one. So its name is 4-methyl uh, pentanoic acid since it, uh, the longest continuous chain contains the five uh, carbon atom and the, we know that the, uh, that the alkene that have the five carbon atom is called the pentene and here in, uh, in the name of the pentene we have dropped the uh, E and is, uh, and is replaced by the OAK acid. So the name of the Mm, the second example here on this slide uh, is 4 methyl pentanoic acid. Uh, similarly, I have shown the two examples of the uh, cyclic carboxylic acid. In the case of the cyclic carboxylic acid, for example, the carboxylic functional group is bonded to a ring, then the suffix carboxylic acid is used. For example, in the first example on the left side, you may see a trans 4 hydroxy cyclohexane carboxylic acid and on the right side uh, I have shown the a, a cyclic um, cyclic carboxylic acid that is having the double bond and the double bond location of the double bond is uh, on the carbon number one and also the carboxylic functional group is present on the number one carbon uh, 
So the example is cyclopen 1 in carboxylic acid. So you may see that in the case of the cyclic carboxylic, if the carboxylic functional group is attached to a cyclic hydrocarbon, then the, we are using the word uh, uh, cyclo uh, sorry, uh, carboxylic acid. Uh, here I am not going into the detail of the nomenclature of your uh, carboxylic acid, which indeed is not the scope of this lecture. We will uh, discuss the acidity of the carboxylic acid. Before discussing the acidity of the carboxylic acid, I have discussed um, shortly about the what are the carboxylic acids and how they are named. Definitely we will use the names of the carboxylic acid when we are discussing the car acidity of the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. That's why I have shortly introduced you about the nomenclature of the carboxylic acid. Here the purpose of this slide is to introduce you the names of the, some of the common carboxylic acids. Uh, when a carboxylic acid loses a proton or the hydrogen atom that is attached to the carboxylic, uh, carboxylic functional group, then the remaining uh, group is called the carboxylate group and uh, we may also uh, call it the acyl group. So here on this slide I have shown you the structure and the name and the acyl name of the acyl group of some of the common carboxylic uh, acids. Uh, for example, the first one is the formic acid. Uh, when you replace its hydrogen or uh, when it loses its uh, the hydrogen atom, the resulting anion is called the formyl. The next one is the acetic acid. When the acetic acid loses a proton, the remaining uh, carboxylate uh, functional group of uh, carboxylate anion is called the acetyl. Uh, and similarly, where the next one is the propanoic acid, uh, or it is also called the propionic acid. Um, propionic acid is the common name. Uh, whereas the propanoic acid is, uh, is it IUPAC name, when the propanoic acid loses one proton, the remaining um, uh, anion is called the propionyl uh, uh, anion. Uh, similarly, the carboxylic acid that is having the four number of the carbonic uh, carbon atoms is, uh, is called the butanoic acid. That is it's the IUPAC name, whereas its common name is the butyric acid. Uh, <coughs> When the butyric acid loses a proton, the anion is called the butyryl uh, anion. Uh, here I have also shown you the dicarboxylic acids. Dicarboxylic acids are those carboxylic acids that have the two carboxylic functional groups. So the first one that I have shown is the oxalic acid. For to remember the oxalic acid, amylonic acid, uh, succinic acid, butyric acid, and adipic acid, remember the key word. OMSGA, O-M-S-G-A. So in the oxalic acid, you have just to attach the two carboxylic functional group with each other. And the, when they lose the two protons, the resulting anion is called the oxalyl. Whereas in, in the malonic acid, you have to uh, just add one methylene group. That is methylene group, that is the CH2 group. And, uh, and in the succinic acid, you have to add another uh, um, methylene group and uh, and so on. So in the malonic acid you may see that the when the malonic acid loses the two protons the resulting anion is called the melano melanoil um, anion in the succinic acid it is again uh, a di uh, diac acid mean it has the two carboxylic acid functional group when succinic acid uh, loses two protons the resulting anion is called the succinyl anion uh, in the glutaric acid uh, when two protons are uh, when uh, glutaric acid loses two protons the resulting dianion is called the glutaryl uh, anion and in the adipic acid uh, similarly the resulting acyl group is called the adipoid uh, adipoil dianine. Um, uh, I have similarly shown you the structure of the acrylic acid, malic acid and fumaric acid. Remember that the malic and fumaric acid are the, uh, are the cistrons, isomers uh, having the same almost, uh, having the same number of carbon atoms. So only the position of the carboxylic acid uh, in the malic acid is the cis, whereas in the fumaric acid it has the trans uh, geometry. So these are the geometrical isomers of uh, each other. Uh, the um, the acyl groups of the malic and the fumaric acid, which are again the diac acid, uh, are called the malleol and the fumaryl uh, uh, diac acid. Uh, dio, uh, uh, sorry, 
the dianine of the malic acid is called the nelly oil, uh, whereas the uh, dianine of the fumaric acid is called the fumar oil. Uh, similarly, I have shown you the structure of the glycolic acid and the lactic acid as well on this slide. So these are some of the most commonly encountered uh, carboxylic acids. I have shown you here on this slide their common name uh, and the resulting acyl uh, anion. Now it's proper time to discuss the acidity of the carboxylic acid. Before we discuss the acidity of the carboxylic acid, let's first discuss what kind of carbonyl oxygen is present in the uh, carboxylic acid. Remember that the carbonyl uh, carbon is sp2 hybridized. In the carboxylic acid, the carboxylic functional group that is CWH, uh, CO is the carbonyl group, and here the carbonyl uh, carbon is sp2 hybridized. Uh, as we know uh, that this carbonyl, um, the carbonyl carbon is bounded with the oxygen atom and oxygen atom being the more electronegative than the sp2 hybridized carbon atom and hence uh, because of the higher electronegativity of the carbonyl oxygen, the carbonyl carbon attain the partial positive charge. Uh, and this partial positive charge has effect on the acidity of the carboxylic acid that we will discuss in the coming slide. Because of this, um, uh, again, if we discuss the bond between the hydro between the oxygen and hydrogen of the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic functional group, again the oxygen electronegativity of the oxygen is higher than the hydrogen, and hence the oxygen um, partially withdraw the uh, electrons from the uh, oxygen hydrogen bond and thus uh, producing a partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom of the carboxyl functional group and leaving the negative partial charge on the oxygen atom of the hydroxyl group. Mm, because of this, the, all the hydrogen atoms of the carboxylic acids are partially uh, attain the partial positive charge when they are attached with to the uh, carboxylic functional group. Because of this partial positive charge uh, um, on, the, uh, on the hydrogen atom of the hydroxyl group and uh, partial negative charge on the carbonyl oxygen, the carboxylic acids are strongly associated with each other uh, through hydrogen bonding. As I have shown the hydrogen bonding between the acetic acid, uh, two molecules of acetic acid. So uh, acetic acid, when the acetic acid, the molecules of acetic acid exist usually in the form of a dimer uh, until unless they are diluted. Uh, present in very uh, low concentration, obviously this low concentration uh, uh, will have uh, um, uh, effect on the hydrogen bonding which is not uh, beyond the scope of this lecture. However, in the solution form, acetic acid molecules usually exist in the form of a dimer as I have shown uh, on this slide. Hydrogen bonding, this hydrogen bonding has significant effect on the dwelling points. So, because of this is a very important point, my dear student, um, this hydrogen bonding that is uh, that exists between the hydrogen atom of the hydroxyl functional group of the carboxylic uh, carboxylic, uh, car uh, carboxylic functional group and the carbonyl oxygen of and other uh, carboxylic acid significantly increases the boiling point. Obviously, more energy will be required to break this uh, extra bonding, that is, the hydrogen bonding, uh, to leave the boundary of the uh, solvent. So, because of this hydrogen bonding, for suppose I have in the acetic acid molecule, there are two uh, carbon atoms, and the two carbon atoms, uh, hydrocarbon is called the alkene. If we compare its uh, boiling point with the, um, with the ethane, so the two carbon atoms, uh, uh, hydrocarbon is called the ethane. If we compare the um, boiling point of the ethane with the carboxylic acid, since in the carboxylic acid, uh, sorry, in the acetic acid, uh, two carbon uh, carboxylic acid called the acetic acid, whereas the two carbon uh, alkane is called the ethane. So when we compare the acidity of the uh, ethane with the acetic acid, since in the acetic acid, extra hydrogen bonding is present, which is not present in the case of the uh, ethane. That's why the boiling point of the acetic, is, uh, acetic acid is higher than that of the ethane. 
this is the because of the hydrogen bonding that is present in the case of acetic acid and is not present in the case of the uh, ethane. So remember that the hydrogen bonding there is present between the hydroxyl hydrogen and the carbonyl oxygen of uh, uh, carboxylic acid increases their boiling point. On this slide I have listed the key concepts that we will discuss today. First of all we will discuss what are the carboxylic acids, why carboxylic acids are acidic, effect of resonance on the acidity of carboxylic acids. We will also discuss the effect of electronegative substituent and the electropositive substituent on the acidity of the carboxylic acids. So these are the key concepts that we will cover in this lecture. As a result of higher electronegativity of oxygen than the hydrogen, the 
oxygen hydrogen bond of the carboxylate group is highly polar so here again i am informing you that the uh, sigma bond between of the uh, that is present between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group is highly polar because of the higher electronegativity of the oxygen than that of the hydrogen and as a result this uh, the hydroxyl hydrogen gets partial positive charge and the oxygen of the hydroxyl group gets the partial negative charge. Another factor that also enhances the electron withdrawing ability of the uh, hydroxyl oxygen, the carboxylic acid, is that the hydroxyl oxygen, remember that the hydroxyl oxygen is directly attached to the carbonyl carbon, which in turn is also possessing partial positive charge. So, the carbonyl oxygen is already having partial positive charge and this uh, carbonyl carbon uh, love, uh, have the tendency to withdraw the electrons from the other uh, um, bonds. So the oxygen also have electron with uh, drawing ability, uh, electron with drawing ability, so it withdraws the electron from the hydrogen and this oxygen is in turn uh, is directly attached to an electron deficient carbon atom um, which is uh, in turn attached to the carbonyl oxygen which is also electro, uh, um, have the partial negative charge. So all these two factors, number one, the electron withdrawing ability of the, the oxygen of the hydroxyl group and as well as the um, electron withdrawing ability of the carbonyl carbon. It attains the electron with, uh, withdrawing ability because of the uh, carbonyl oxygen. Uh, so the hydroxyl hydrogen, uh, the sigma bond of the hydroxyl um, uh, group that is the bond between the oxygen and hydrogen is highly polar. And I, here I have shown you this bond with a red line. Uh, and I have shown you that the hydrogen is possessing the partial positive charge and the oxygen is possessing the partial negative charge. As a result, sigma bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group is highly polar and consequently the Attached hydrogen can easily be released, thus generating an anion called the carboxylate anion. So here I have shown you uh, uh, an equilibrium between the carboxylic acid and its resulting anion or the carboxylate anion. So because of the highly non-polar nature of the sigma bond that is present between the hydroxyl oxygen and the hydrogen, this bond is liable or can easily be broken and thus generating a proton and a carboxylate anion. And any species that produces the proton or can donate the proton will say it a acid. That's why the carboxylic acids are acid because they donate the proton. If they have one carboxylic functional group, they will donate one proton. If they have more than one, they will donate uh, more than one hydrogen per molecule. Here uh, I have shown you a uh, monocarboxylic acid and hence it is donating a one molecule of the carboxylic acid is donating uh, one proton. Uh, the next question is, how strong are these acids? What is the acidity? Uh, strength of the uh, carboxylic acid. So let's discuss how strong carboxylic acids are. As far as the naming of the carboxylic acid is concerned, carboxylic acids are named by replacing the E of the corresponding alkane name with the OH acid. For example, here on this slide, you may see the propanoic acid. Its name is derived from the propane as the propanoic acid contain the four, um, uh, sorry, three uh, carbon atoms and the, uh, we know that the three carbon atoms uh, uh, alkene is called the propane. So from the propane name, we are dropping the E and is replacing it with the oic acid. So the name becomes the propanoic acid. And if there is any substituent, the, you have to name that substituent um, with the, you have to show the, that substituent with the number of the carbon atom. Uh, remember that the carboxylic, uh, carboxylic uh, functional group is always given the number one. So here, uh, 
in another example, you are seeing the, uh, the structure of the four methyl pentanoic cases. And here I have uh, used the color scheme. You, you may see that the methyl is shown in the green color and it is uh, substituted at the carbon number four. And similarly, the uh, carboxylic functional group is present on the carbon number one. So its name is four methyl uh, pentanoic acid since it uh, the longest continuous chain contains the five uh, carbon atom and the, we know that the uh, that the alkene that have the five carbon atom is called the pentene and here in, uh, in the name of the pentene we have dropped the uh, e and is uh, and is replaced by the o acid so the name of the um, the second example here on this slide uh, is four methyl pentanoic acid. Uh, similarly, I have shown the two examples of the uh, cyclic carboxylic acid. In the case of the cyclic carboxylic acid, for example, the carboxylic functional group is bonded to a ring, then the suffix carboxylic acid is used. For example, in the first example on the left side, you may see a trans 4 hydroxy cyclohexane carboxylic acid, and on the right side, uh, I have shown the a, a cyclic, um, cyclic carboxylic acid that is having the double bond and the double bond location of the double bond is uh, on the carbon number one and also the carboxylic function group is present on the number one carbon uh, so the example is cyclopent one in carboxylic acid so you may see that in the case of the cyclic carboxylic if the carboxylic function group is attached to a cyclic hydrocarbon then the, we are using the word uh, uh, cyclo uh, sorry uh, carboxylic acid uh, here I am not going into the detail of the nomenclature of your uh, carboxylic acid which indeed if we compare the carboxylic acids with the mineral acids like hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, remember carboxylic acids are much weaker acids than the mineral acids but, but much stronger acids than alcohol since alcohols also have hydroxyl functional group and uh, as I have informed you that in the case of a hydroxyl functional group the uh, bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group is um, is polar then why not the why not we say that the alcohols are not the acer whereas carboxylic acids are the acer remember that the alcohols also have acid factor but the resulting alkoxy ion. Here I have shown you the um, uh, methyl, uh, ethyl alcohol. When ethyl alcohol loses a proton, uh, the resulting uh, anion is called ethoxy. And in the uh, and or in the general, uh, if you speak generally, when a alcohol that is represented with ROH loses a proton, the resulting anion that is RO negative one is called alkoxy. Remember that in the case of the carboxylic acid, the carboxylate anion show resonance. The negative charge of one oxygen is present on the hydroxyl oxygen as well as on the um, uh, on the carbonyl oxygen. So this is resonating between the this in the case of the carboxylic acid, the resulting anion is uh, resonance stable and the, uh, the resulting negative charge is resonating on the uh, on the uh, three atoms. That is, one is uh, two are the oxygen atom and one is the uh, Carbon, uh, carbon atom of the carbonyl uh, functional group. Whereas in the alkoxy group, the negative charge is localized and hence the alkoxy group is less stable than the uh, carboxylate functional group and hence that's why the carboxylic acids can lose a proton since the uh, resulting anion is more stable than the alkoxy uh, anion of the alcohol. That's why these uh, alcohols don't lose the proton. However, under um, very uh, uh, hard conditions, alcohols also behave like uh, acid. But their acidity is much more, much more less than the carboxylic acid, which are in turn much more less acidic than the mineral acid. So this equals you have to remember. Again here on um, this slide I have shown, uh, I have uh, elaborated why uh, alcohols are less acidic than the carboxylic acid. If an alcohol donate a proton due to the polarity of the sigma bond uh, uh, between the oxygen and the hydrogen bond uh, and the hydrogen uh, atom of the hydroxyl group, the resulting anion is called the alkoxy anion. Now, similarly, if a carboxylic acid donates a proton due to the polarity of the sigma bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen um, 
uh, hydrogen, the uh, of the hydroxyl group, the resulting anion is called the carboxylate anion. Uh, if we compare the stability of the two uh, anions, I have compared the relative stability of the two, that is the alkoxy and the carboxylate anion on the next slide. So let's move towards the uh, next slide. Here on this slide on the top, you may see a carboxylic acid that is reacting, uh, that is uh, uh, actually uh, losing a proton, so thus generating a carboxylate anion. And in the second line, you may see that this uh, negative charge on the carboxylate anion is resonating between the two uh, oxygen atoms. And hence, involving, uh, since this resonance, resonance takes place to the carbonyl uh, carbon, so we may say that the, in the case of the carboxylate anion, the charge is resonating between the three atoms, that is the two for oxygen and one the carbon atom. Whereas in the case of the uh, alcohol, when it loses, anyhow, if it loses a proton, the resulting uh, uh, alkoxy ion do not have resonance. That's why we say that um, because of the higher stability of the carboxylate anion than the alkoxy ion, we say that the carboxylic acids are much more stronger acids than the uh, alcohol. Uh, here at the hmm, at the bottom of this slide, I have shown some pK value. For example, uh, the ethyl alcohol I have a pK value of 60, whereas the pK value of the phenol, that is also an alcohol, but it is an aromatic alcohol. Since in the case of the uh, uh, phenol, the negative charge is uh, delocalized on the uh, benzene ring. Uh, so its uh, pK value is higher than that of the uh, ethyl alcohol. And similarly, the pK value of the acetic acid is 4.76 uh, and that of the HCl is negative 7. So if I compare uh, the acidity, acidic strength of the um, acetic acid and the phenol, Acetic acid, uh, the resulting anion of the acetic acid is the acetate ion. Uh, and in the case of the acetate ion, there are two resonance structures possible, whereas in the case of the phenol, when it uh, loses one pro, uh, proton, the resulting uh, uh, phenoxy anion uh, have more than one uh, resonance structure. You may draw it. Uh, why? As we know that as the number of the resonance structure increases, the stability of the, uh, that molecule also increases. So in the case of the uh, phenol and acetic acid, acetic acid, the anion of the acetic acid is showing the two part resonance structure, whereas in the case of the phenoxy anion, we have more than one uh, resonance structure. Then why um, acetic acid is stronger than the phenol? On the basis of the resonance structure, the phenol should be much more stronger acid than the acetic acid. Why? My question is why? Let's discuss it uh, or explain it on, uh, in the coming section. Another factor that uh, determines the relative higher acid strength of the carboxylic acid than the alcohol is the uh, is the uh, energy of formation of the carboxylate and the uh, alkoxy anion. And here on this slide you may see uh, when carboxylate uh, loses a proton, it uh, has to overcome a, a energy that is I have represented with this delta G naught. And in the case of the uh, alkoxy ion, this energy is much higher much higher than the energy of formation of the carboxylate anion. So the energy of formation of the alkoxy anion is higher than that of the carboxylate anion. That's why the carboxylate uh, loses the anion more easily than the alkoxy anion. Here is the detailed explanation why phenol less acidic than the acetic acid, although the number of the resonance structure of the phenoxy anion is higher than the acetic anion. The answer is the negative charge on more electronegative atom is more stable than the less electronegative atom. So in the case of the acetic, uh, acetic acid, the resulting acetate anion is resonance stabilized and in the case of the acetate anion, the negative charge is resonating on the hydroxyl oxygen and on the carbonyl oxygen which I have shown in the uh, blue and red colors respectively. Whereas in the case of the phenol, when it loses a proton, the resulting phenoxy anion 
um, the negative charge of the resulting phenoxyanion is resonating on the uh, phenyl ring and in the phenyl ring you may uh, know that it is composed of the carbon atoms and the negative charge is residing on the is resonating on the um, carbons of the phenyl ring so in the case uh, of the acetate anion the negative charge is uh, resonating on the oxygen atoms since oxygen atom is more electronegative than the carbons of the phenyl ring so acetate anion is more stable than the phenoxy anion and hence acetic acid is more stable uh, as more acidic than the phenol if we compare the carboxylic acids with the mineral acids like hydrochloric acid nitric acid sulfuric acid remember carboxylic acids are much weaker acids than the mineral acids but, but much stronger acids than alcohol since alcohols also have hydroxyl functional group and uh, as I have informed you that in the case of a hydroxyl functional group the uh, bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group is um, is polar then why not the why not we say that the alcohol any factor that destabilize the carboxylate anion relative to the undissociated carboxylic acid will decrease the acidity of the carboxylic acid. Electron withdrawing groups attached to the carboxylic acid will increase the acidity and electron donating groups will decrease the acidity of the carboxylic acid. Any factor that will increase the mm, resonance of the carboxylate anion will increase the acidic strength of the carboxylic acid. My question is, why is trifluoroacetic acid 32 times strong, more stronger than the acetic acid? Electron withdrawing or donating process to a sigma bond by an atom by virtue of the difference in the electron activity of the bonded atom is called inductive effect. Inductive effect is of two types. Electron withdrawing atoms of the substituent create the negative inductive effect which is mostly written as um, I negative effect and the electron donating atoms are the substituents create the positive inductive effect which is mostly written as I positive effect. Inductive effect is our distance dependent property. How is the magnitude of the negative inductive effect greater will be increased in the acidity and vice versa? As the number of the substituents having negative inductive effect increases, acidic acidity of the carboxylic acid increases and vice versa. Here I am comparing the um, acidic strength of the trichloroacetic acid, dichloroacetic acid, chloroacetic acid and acetic acid. The most, uh, the most acidic among these um, carboxylic acid is the trichloroacetic acid which is having the free chloro substituent which produce much more negative inductive effect and hence they polarize the hydroxyl sigma bond that is the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxyl bond as it is now um, more easily liable than in the case of acetic acid. So in the case of trichloroacetic acid, trichloroacetic acid the magnitude of the negative inductive effect is uh, higher than in the case of the chloroacetic acid. So the trichloroacetic acid is the more uh, is the more powerful, or um, um, you may say that it is 32 times more stronger than the acetic acid by the virtue of the negative inductive effect that is produced by free chloro substituent. Inductive effect depends on the distance. Plus, is the distance of the electron withdrawing substituent from the carboxylate group greater will be the increase in the acidity. For example, two chlorobutanoic acid is stronger acid than the three chlorobutanoic acid because in the case of the two, uh, two chlorobutanoic acid the chloro substituent is, uh, near to, is nearer to the uh, carboxylate substituent whereas in the case of three chloro substituent the chloro substituent is uh, far from relatively far from the carboxylate substituent and similarly in the case of Four chlorobutanoic acid. Um, the it is uh, four chlorobutanoic acid is much weaker than the uh, three chlorobutanoic acid because in the four uh, in the four chlorobutanoic acid the chloro substitution is uh, is on the farthest uh, position than the two chlorobutanoic acid. So you may say that in this series the butanoic acid is the weakest acid, whereas the two chloro butanoic acid is the powerful uh, or the more acid than the 
to tunnel cases because of the inductive effect. Here you may see that as the position of the electron withdrawing substituent, that is the chloro substituent, increases from the carboxylate uh, functional or the carbonyl, uh, um, carbonyl position, the acidity also decreases. Uh, you may see that the pK value of the butanoic acid is 4.82 whereas that of the 1 chlorobutanoic acid is 2.86. So at the end, this is the summary of the two days lecture. Acidity of the carboxylic acid depends on the bond polarity of the sigma bond between the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom of the hydroxyl group. Acidity of the carboxylic acid depends upon the relative stability of the carboxylate anion. Acidity of the carboxylic acid depends on the inductive effect of the substituent. Those substituents that create the negative inductive effect increase the acidity and positive inductive effect decrease the acidity of the carboxylic acid. Now it's the time for the quiz. You have to arrange, the, uh, you have to give the reason why the pK value of the paramethoxy benzoic acid is 4.46 whereas the benzoic acid the pK value is 4.19 and for the paramitro benzoic acid the pK value is 3.41 so you may say that the uh, paramitro benzoic acid is the strongest acid among these uh, among these three um, benzoic acid derivatives you have to give the reason why paramitro benzoic acid is stronger acid than the paramethoxy and uh, the paramethoxy benzoic acid and the benzoic acid alone. Uh, there is a key, there is a hint you have to explain uh, it on the basis of the inductive effect. The second assignment is, uh, is which of the which acid of each phase would you expect to be stronger um, in acidic strength and why? For example, you have to compare the uh, acidic strength of the acetic acid and the uh, floral acetic acid. You have to compare the uh, acidic strength of the one uh, two floral two fluoro butanoic acid and three and three fluoro butanoic acid. The third question is arrange the foreign compounds in the increasing order of their acidic property along with the reason. You have to arrange the benzo um, give the order of the acidity of the benzoic acid, four nitro benzoic acid and three four dinitro benzoic acid and four methoxy benzoic acid. At the end here is a list of the recommended books that you may consult for uh, the preparation of your lecture.